a portrait of a female cyborg in a futuristic city? And the results are pretty good. This is Firefly, Adobe's new AI image generator. It's like mid-journey, but with some differences, both in how it works and also in the roadmap and where Adobe's taking this AI platform. Let's talk a little bit about it. In terms of how it works, you already saw that you can input a text prompt and generate images. On the right-hand side, you have these parameters that can be used in the image generation process. For example, we can change the aspect ratio. Maybe you're looking for a widescreen image, 16 by 9, and Firefly would now generate images in that aspect ratio. You can also select a content type, different styles, here's some popular ones, as well as color and tone, lighting, and composition. For example, we can change the lighting to dramatic lighting and change the composition to narrow depth of field and click on generate and we can see the results using those new parameters. To access Firefly, you can go into firefly.adobe.com. At the moment, it is a beta release and you will have to join a waiting list. Once you're in there, you can see the two things that you can do, text to image, which is what you just saw, or text effects. If you click on generate, you can generate text effects that look like this. How does this work? Very easy. All you do is enter your text. In this case, I'll enter my initials, J and R, and I'll describe what I want my text effect to generate. So it could be something like golden ornaments. And Firefly would generate that text effect using the reference text and the description. And from the right-hand side, you can see sample effects. You can expand them to see them all. You can do flowers, color marvel, or cookies. The advantage of using Firefly is that you have access to settings such as text effect fit. So how closely is the effect fitting the text? Is it going to be tight or loose? You can also choose from the fonts on this list. You can click on view all so you can see all the fonts and you can click on the font that you want to apply. In this case, I think we'll be better off by going with a tight fit. And of course, you can experiment with any prompt you like. For example, grass and see what comes up. You then can choose from the different styles. You'll see four styles below and you can click on them to apply that style to your text. And also another important feature that you should try is that you can select a transparent background and when you're ready to export, you can click on this download button and it will export a PNG with a transparent background or if you prefer, you can apply any color you like and then export the image as a JPEG with that color background. At the time of this recording, Firefly is in beta release and you have access to those two options. However, as you can see, Adobe is planning on creating more AI tools, including a recoloring vector feature. And these tools are in the exploration process. Perhaps the most interesting to me is the text to brush where you can generate brushes for Photoshop using a detailed description, which I think is fantastic. Now, one of the questions you might be thinking is really, how is it different than Midjourney? One of the biggest differences is that Adobe will, of course, integrate Firefly into a lot of their creative applications, such as Photoshop. Another huge difference is how the Adobe Firefly system is learning how to generate these images. According to Adobe, Firefly will focus on commercial use and the way that they will go about that is by training Firefly using Adobe Stock, which is Adobe's royalty-free media library, alongside other openly licensed content, including content where the copyright has expired. Now, to be very clear, this is content on Adobe Stock, not your content in your Creative Cloud libraries or your personal work or anything like that. Adobe says that in the future, you'll be able to train Firefly with your own content to generate images based on your own design and style. Adobe also says that it's exploring compensation models for contributors that will allow them to monetize from the content that trains Firefly. There's no details on how that will work, but it's nice to know that Adobe's thinking about sharing profits with the users training Firefly. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking what's better, Firefly or Midjourney. There's no question about it. Midjourney at the moment is much better. It's trained under a lot more content, partly because the content that is being trained on is copyrighted, where Adobe's only using content that they have copyright for. And obviously, Midjourney has been around for a little longer. But just for the purposes of demonstration, I've used the same prompt on both Firefly and Midjourney. 
five. And these are the results. On the left, we have Mid Journey. And on the right, we have Firefly. Below, you'll see the prompt that I use. For the most part, I try to keep the prompt simple without any extra settings or any other aids just to see what the AI would generate with a simple prompt. But of course, you can get better results on either of these applications by using those extras. In this first comparison, I used a studio portrait of a cute monster with big green eyes and I think both Mid Journey and Firefly did a pretty good job. If I had to pick a winner, I think I would pick Mid Journey just because some of the detail, the depth of field and other elements are a little bit better than Firefly. But Firefly also did a fantastic job. Then I did a golden hour photo of tacos with avocado on a wooden table with the New York City skyline in the background. I assumed that Firefly would do better in this case because there's a lot of stock photography of food on Adobe Stock, which is where Firefly is trained. But again, I think that Mid Journey did a much better job. I think that the background looks better and the foreground itself is also better. In some cases, Firefly did struggle with the background, as you can see on this top left photo. Then I tried realistic 1980s Polaroid of a man standing in front of a muscle car. Again, Firefly struggled with that. I assume that Firefly has not had a lot of training with Polaroids, whereas Mid Journey has. These Polaroids actually look very realistic. So I think that Mid Journey takes it in this case. I'm not really sure why this guy's wearing a suit and the scaling is a little bit off in this photo. Next, we have close-up of an ant's head. And in this case, Mid Journey and Firefly both did a fantastic job. I think that Mid Journey gave me more of what I wanted, the actual head of the ant, but Firefly did generate some pretty cool macro images. Then I thought about a prompt that Firefly could probably do well in, and that is product photography. There's a lot of products shot up against solid backgrounds in Adobe Stock, so no surprise, the prompt blue headphones up against the yellow solid background did much better in Firefly than Mid Journey. Mid Journey did a good job, but I feel that Firefly actually gave me more of what I wanted, the blue headphones up against a solid background. And again, this was no surprise. There's a lot of this type of content in Adobe Stock. Then I try to get a little crazy with the prompts. So I did nighttime photo of a muscular cat wearing a tracksuit and lifting weights on a rooftop with the San Francisco skyline in the background. And in this case, I don't think either of them did that well. I think that Mid Journey overall did the better job. However, I do think that this typewrite image is more of what I had in mind when I typed in that prompt. So if I had to pick an image out of the eight, I would pick the Firefly image. But overall, I think that Mid Journey did a better job. Then I tried another crazy random prompt. Steampunk man wearing goggles and red shorts waving at you while riding a unicycle. And in this case, I think Firefly probably did a little bit better. The images look like they're stock photos, which again, it makes total sense. And I did get a couple of waves in most images, whereas with Mid Journey, I think I only got one wave and no red shorts. Everybody's wearing red, but no red shorts. And in terms of unicycle, I think I only got this one image off of Mid Journey with a unicycle. And in Firefly, maybe two. We have one for sure, and then maybe this one. But we at least got red shorts on all images. Then I tried a group of cute dogs smiling while taking a selfie at the park during a sunny golden hour sunset. And there is no question, Mid Journey is a clear winner in this case. The results in Firefly have issues and distortions that I wasn't very happy with. And for the most part, all the images that Mid Journey generated look pretty good. Then I tried a flat design logo for a towing company featuring a tow truck, used gray and orange as the primary colors. And they both did a good job in terms of fulfilling my prompt. I guess at the end of the day, they both have one design I like. I just happen to like the Mid Journey design a little bit better. Mid Journey is famously bad at generating hands, but that improved with Mid Journey 5. And in this case, Mid Journey did a really good job with the prompt single human hand against a solid white background. I think only one of the hands has more than five fingers, which is this one here in the top right. Whereas with Firefly, we got a pretty good result on all four images. However, Mid Journey did give me a white background on all photos, whereas Firefly gave me a gray background. And finally, I asked Mid Journey and Firefly to show me artificial intelligence creating art. I think they both did a pretty good job. These AIs are not necessarily creating art, but I do find the images intriguing. And I do like the variety better on Firefly. And even though the images on Mid Journey are also good, they're all the same style and have a similar subject, so I'm gonna have to give this round to Firefly. 
But as I mentioned earlier, by using modifiers and different options, you can get better results with either of these applications. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about this comparison and the results. There's no doubt that AI is very controversial, but Adobe is in the game now, which was to be expected. Let me know down in the comments below what your thoughts are and what you think about Adobe Firefly.